Hello and welcome to episode number 80 of Apex Instant Tips brought to you every Friday at 12.05 Eastern Time. I'm Anton and we have with us today our guest Hayden. Welcome Hayden. Uh, pleased to be here Anton. Uh, how goes the fundraising? Uh, not so well. Uh, Chris is definitely well ahead of me but uh, if anybody is interested that's the place to do it right there. Um, so I am riding Pelotonia uh, in a few weeks, so um, I've got a, a big number to get up to. I've got to do some fundraising. I've got to get, get on it. Uh, but without further ado, Hayden, we're going to jump into our tip in a second. But before, I'm going to give us a joke of the week and allow people to start thinking about the joke of the week. And if they, um, uh, <laughs> if they, uh, if no Googling for the answer. And uh, we'll see if anybody gets it by the time that we're done, which probably means no one will listen to us. They'll just be trying to think about the joke of the week, but no Googling. And if you Neilish, you can't answer because I already gave it to you and you Googled the answer. So um, here we go. This is the joke of the week. Uh, why does a duck have feathers? Um, so if anybody thinks they know why a duck has feathers, we're looking for um, uh, a silly, funny reason, not like some, Ortho, I don't know, ortho, ornithological, ortho, ortho, ornithological, ornithological. Uh, answer. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, do we not? Yes. You know, you donate to me, not to Chris. That's the, or, well, it's all to Pelotonia, but uh, donate to that profile. That's what we're looking for. Um, okay. So Hayden, we have just five minutes. We've burned uh, a little bit of time already, but let's see what we got. Um, what do you yes. have for us this week? So um, I have an, an application that allows me to um, uh, record uh, when uh, employees leave their employment. So we can see that August Rupel uh, quit yesterday. Um, if I wanted to um, uh, register a new termination, I would come here, pick the employee and pick the date. Uh, I have the ability to pass in uh, uh, whatever no, date you have. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, the underlying code is uh, as uh, looks like the following. Um, do, do you want to make any uh, code review comments on this code? Well, I mean, you know, right away I see a, a couple of little things. Like you can you can use the terminate employee procedure to apparently unterminate somebody because you can pass a null into termination date. You can also pass a null into employee ID and do nothing at all. So, I mean, I think. It, it, I don't know if the business rules allow it, but you can terminate somebody five years ago or five years from now. I mean, it's right. A, yeah. Yeah. So, so you're observing that it is possible to abuse the, this uh, simply written procedure as it is to do things with it that are probably not intended by the author of this code. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Um, and so and you, that means that you have to do all of that sort of logic outside of the procedure. Right. And I would say that this is a pretty common source of error. Um, I, the, when I look at bugs, I see a lot of bugs that are related to people misusing parameters as they're intended to use. So my um, recommendation for how to solve this is the introduction of a code library that our friend Stephen Forresting wrote. Oh, called, a crossover episode. I like it. Called Assert. Um, so Assert uh, does what you might expect it to. Um, it uh, has a, a series of procedures for um, uh, this condition is null, is not null, is true, is false. Yeah, I can't I read have, any of that here, but, uh, but if you have it in an editor. Yeah, so uh, okay. how's that? So I, okay. I've imported it into my repo um, and I've compiled it into my database. And so, yeah, I, I have the ability to assert that something should be null, is not null, is true, is false, is in range, is, uh, et cetera. Oh. So, uh, it means that I, I can take this code here and enhance it to um, look like the following. So now I have a validate assumptions section in mm -hmm. which I can uh, define both common sense sort of parameters for what uh, is and isn't uh, uh, possible to use this function for, as well as business rules that might be arbitrary and unintuitive. All right. So uh, for, for by way of example, um, I can assert that the employee ID cannot be null. Uh, why don't I go ahead and add um, uh, the termination date cannot be null either. Okay. So this should be um, employee ID not 
um, cannot be null. And this should be termination date cannot be null. So if, if I were to compile this. Right, so now if we do that, what do we get when we, when we run the, uh, when we're on the screen and, and we try to terminate somebody? Uh, employee cannot be null. Oh, uh, if I try to uh, uh, terminate someone in the future, termination date must be in the past 60 days. And I, should I try to terminate myself? This employee cannot be terminated because I... <laughs> <laughs> I, I like because the way I, you code, Hayden. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I have a condition that looks like, like this. Yeah, this okay. is definitely something I would uh, try to highlight in a uh, code review right there, but that's great. <laughs> I like that. Um, but hey, I, I, this is Apex Instant Tips. I think we could make uh, a potentially a little improvement. When I yes. look at, I, I'm familiar with Steven's assert package. If you go, all of these errors are raised from one thing, assert dot this condition. All the others flow through assert dot this condition. So if we take a look at that, you can see it raises an application error on line 24. And I think we could improve that by saying raise application error and passing this through our Apex Lang. Um, and that allows us to have a translation for this. So if, if we have our application in multiple languages, by using Apex Lang right here, it translates it. And I'm also going to suggest that we would change the, um, the error number from the negative 20,000, which is always used all the time, to something we can specifically um, specifically identify. Um, if we hearken back to episode 22 of Apex Instant Tips, we talk about handling errors that show up in the screen like this. And if you do that, you can you can do a little bit more to suppress the, for example, the Aura 2000. You can, um, you can do some things. So I'd, I'd suggest people look at episode 22 uh, in relationship to this as well, but go ahead in. Yeah, so, so we have 20 seconds. Uh, I, I already created um, a uh, text message for employee do not know. So now it's it's translatable. If I were, uh, I could then um, enhance uh, this to actually pass in the the name of the text message instead of the actual string. So I'm going to compile this. All right, and with uh, one second to go, I think we've made it happen. You want to run the page and see what you get. Yeah. So now when I try to uh, pass a null. It reads from the text message as opposed to the hard-coded message in the package. Right, and I think that's good because then you can also change the text message without hard-coding anything, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's great. Um, well, uh, after the break, I'm going to ask if anybody saw a bug in your code because I saw another bug uh, that I'll, I'll call out. Uh, but, uh, but if you really came in just for five minutes, uh, do all the things like subscribe, tell your mom about the show and hopefully uh, hopefully you'll stick around for the next few minutes. We have an answer to our joke. We have a wisdom of the week. Um, and uh, Hayden, your screen is still showing. I'm going to say truly, I just saw this bug. Um, uh, it is, I can't remember the line number, but where you um, assert that uh, an employee can only be uh, terminated within six, uh, 60 days. Um, I think you actually are doing five years because you have add months. Um, oh, so you're right. Yeah. Either line 22 or line 24 is, is yeah. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know which it is, but one of those two is wrong. <laughs> I'll just go ahead and change it. Okay. Yeah, you're, you're okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, all right. Uh, well, that was a, a very minor uh, uh, thing. Um, so, this week's uh, Wisdom of the Week is very closely related to what we were just talking about. And it is that really well-written code requires very few comments. Um, so what I mean by that is if you write your code in such a way that you say things like assert is not null and the parameter, you don't need a comment on that. Yeah. No one is not going to understand what that is doing. Right, right. So there's no need for a comment. And so what, and this is something that's a, a little bit new to me. I was, I was a big fan of tons of comments and code just sort of written linearly down a, a, a procedure that's sort of, I, I've never, I haven't taken a lot of computer science classes. I haven't, but I have read a lot and I continue to read a lot. And this is one of the things that, that's really 
bubbled up over the last few years for me is by if every time you get ready to write a comment, if you think, wait a minute, these 30 lines that I'm writing a comment for should really be a separate procedure or function with a good name, mm. then I don't need the comment, right? I just yeah. take the comment, I replace it with the right name, move that into uh, another procedure, and then things become a whole lot more obvious, right? That if, the, if these 20 lines of code are in the procedure that says, you know, terminate employee, well, okay, then then I know that that's what it's doing and I don't need to comment it in the, in, and I just have a, so I, go ahead. I think it's a great heuristic. Yeah. So every time um, I, I am writing a comment to explain a large block of code, I'm going to second guess whether or not it, it should be moved to another procedure. Yeah. Yeah. And of course this doesn't apply within the package spec in your package spec, lots of comments tell me what this does, but in your package body, every yeah. time, you you think you're going to write a comment? Think oh, maybe this maybe this really should be a separate procedure, um, right? Yeah. Um, uh, one thing I'll, I'll add on, on the subject of the assert package um, before I forget is um, I actually think there is an opportunity to enhance the library of assertions that uh, is, is preceded for you and. Um, uh, Stevens uh, package. So perhaps there are assertions that you'll run into repeatedly that you just may want to standardize. Oh, I think that's a great idea, right? Um, every time that you you find yourself writing the same kind of code over and over again that could be asserted, I think that that's great. Um, you know, I, I all the time I'm I'm checking to see if a if a lookup is in a table, right? So you know, you could do like a lookup is valid or something like that. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that's great. Um, and then, then again, it's written in one place uh, and, and you don't have to, you don't have to guess, am I writing it the right way? Uh, yeah, good. I think yeah. that assert, I think that assert package could have lots of things generic or, or even specific to your environment that, that would make sense. Um, so uh, now on to the joke, Hayden, do you have any, any guess on to why a duck has feathers? Uh, so the answer uh, came back to me because I, I've told this joke before. <laughs> and um, the the reason ducks have feathers, um, it is well known, is uh, to cover their quack. <laughs> that, that's it. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, to cover their quack. So, um, or Michelle, uh, nobody wants to see a naked duck. Not too far off. I think that was a, a pretty close guess. <laughs> Uh, that's all we have. Um, I hope you have a great weekend. Yes. Take care, everybody. Do all the things. Bye-bye.